All right, everyone, as you can see, I played WK Dad on DN. I sped this up to like one and a half speed so you guys wouldn't be bored. It's pretty long. It was like 27 minutes. So, all right, uh, let's see, I'm playing Still Swarms. I got lucky to get to go first, and I drew a pretty darn good opening hand. I had a pretty good three chances caller, tour guide, and Greffer to start with. Um, I'm playing a different version of Still Swarms where I need to get that scout in the grave, so I chose Greffer. And here you see I'm just talking to him. You know, I don't get this. It's the first time I've got to play him, so I wanted to really go ahead and just spend a few minutes talking. I didn't realize we were going to play a match. So you'll see that I don't talk quite as much later. But if you ever play me on DN, you'll see I'll type four, five, six sentences or, or uh, you know, words or whatever <laughs> to somebody else's one. I just type really fast. So I dump the scout. He plays duality. I don't know he's playing hammer and nail. And for those of you guys who don't know what hammer and nail is, just go watch Dubka Dad's uh, deck profile. You'll be able to find it. I think it's one of his top last five or so, maybe last ten videos. So he gets three generic cards. One of he picks the gores. So as you can see by my hand, I really don't have an answer to gores. But Tour Guide will get me an answer. So, worst case scenario is I have to get Ass of Golem, but he Baylors it. Which I think everybody should do Baylor like that, put it in the back row. That way it's on the field and you can't say, oh, I didn't see it, or whatever. It's a good idea. So, anyway, I end my turn. I don't attack. I don't really want to get gores this early when I have no answers because I don't want to play Still Swarm Moth because it's, uh, it's really not helpful to bounce back the gores back to his hand just so he can drop it again. So I draw gores. Now I'm thinking, okay, I can, I can double sack for gores. You know, I have some place here. I have at least a, an idea. Uh, I almost summoned the caller first before I attacked. All right, I forgot to summon the caller. Sorry, is what I meant to say. So out comes caller. Um, you you know when you know they have gores, you might as well attack with the smallest. And then he lets the 1700 go through. And out comes gores in defense. I should have probably thought about making Utopia there because of uh, because of the Gores attacking into uh, Tour Guide, but I don't know. I wanted to save my Caller for the Moth play so Caller could special summon um, Sentinel and then I could exceed with uh, the, the Tour Guide. So I probably should have been a little smarter. Um, he chose very well here goes the Baylor because he knows pretty much all on plans monarchs that's really what this is um, so if I had a utopia right now I would have had a uh, negated attack and I could have negated the second attack left everything alive um, I wouldn't even had to use moth's ability I could have just sacrificed Moth into a Caller, brought out something else with Moth, or with Caller's ability. And as you can see, I made a stupid, stupid misplay. I tried to book a token. What was I thinking? It was late at night. Sorry about that, guys. So, that's... <laughs> you can't book a token. So, anyway. He's cool. Let me take it back. All I'm going to do is book the Gores to get rid of it. So I lose my collar, which sucks. And I booked the Gores in the end phase so I could bring out Scout. Double sack for Gores was my play. I got lucky drawn into the Garastag, and now I don't have to do that. I can send him away and gain a thousand. 
So he's pretty broken. Even if that didn't work, if he Valored it right here, I would be able to uh, still be able to attack over it. So he asked what the cost is because so far, you know, Moth has been a thousand. Um, he must realize it was still something to do. This one doesn't really have a cost except that, you know, you have to target a card your opponent controls. I just love that it's one card, doesn't say face up or down, doesn't say monster, just any card. And I can send it, it's fantastic. In my opinion, Gear Stag is the best card in the whole deck. Collar is right up there too, though. So he's done a thousand, on, it's a pretty one-sided duel. I'm just asking him what, you know, I'm not asking him, but I'm saying, what the heck are you playing? You know, I'm just really curious. I haven't really seen a theme yet. I'm looking through the watchers I have. We got four. I think that's highest it goes to is nine. He reborns my TGU. And the shenanigans start. And I do Zen, I thought Zen mains, but um, he probably knows I have a moth or another gear stag, so it wouldn't really did anything at all. Mm, that's why I said, hmm, okay. And then I realized it was hammer and nail. Uh, I don't have this deck memorized from the video I saw, I just saw it like the one time. And then once I saw this guy, I knew that another one was coming out. Yep. And then I was hoping for Utopia. But he brings out my stroke, which hurts. Because he gets rid of my big guy. Here comes Gigantes, which... In my opinion, a lot more people need to play Gigantes in a, a deck with even just a few earths because he's a heavy storm he's 1900 he's special summonable he's great um, a really good card so i'm just going to go for all this shenanigan stuff again there's no reason not to i've got the gores to save me i almost dropped gores from this deck list so hopefully you guys will like it and at least see that I know I'm running tour guide in a deck, and that's not always what I want to do, and that's not always the best answer, but at the same time, I really want to uh, give this deck the full potential. So the whole point of running the tour guide in there is to make plays with the deck when you can't otherwise. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry, that was me watching the Olympics. I had it paused for too long. Watching the men's basketball in the middle of recording this voiceover. Okay, so uh, the reason I got I chose my stroke over anything else because I, I know his invoker can special summon again, but the my stroke hurts me in the long run. And I was thinking about you know gores or a gear stag that I have back now. Uh, if my field was empty, I could do sell. You know, anyway, I was setting up for the long term play. But then, he kind of goes for it. Unless you have gores, you know, he's going to kill me. Yeah, I really wish I could. I should have just turned the, the volume down. That's what I should have done. Watching men's basketball play Argentina Olympics. So now I'm looking at my... Uh, much time I'm recording. It's the very first time I ever used my Camtasia uh, software. So I really didn't know what was going on or how to use it. So thanks for uh, listening to me babble on about it. But it's really good, guys. Um, Camtasia's got really good uh, screen recording software options. You, I can get into a lot of the effects later. It, there's quite a few effects that I can uh, 
do with it that I'll try to play with later. So now Dub K is like, damn it, I had game. He's at 400. He realizes Gores is going to punch. Um, so he just goes ahead and kills the token, makes Utopia. But he's still got that Invoker. What I hope that uh, Kenobi breaks out is is uh, something that you can exceed to ranks with. You know, maybe it doesn't do anything or it's a zero attack. I don't know. Just something that you could make. You could do something with two ranks that have no more materials that they used up. I don't know. He veilers the gear stag. And I know that I have to attack the Utopia twice because I can't attack the Invoker. It doesn't matter. I could attack the Invoker and he would have negated it. It really didn't matter either way. And he could have turned all three here to defense. Utopia would have died automatically without even being attacked. And the other two would have died. But I also had the, uh, the Caller. So we go to uh, game two. Rematch. I was really happy to see that he wanted to play again. And I thought, well, I didn't get to see very much, so my side deck is absolute crap. I think I took out the one for one, which is uh, has already come out of the deck, and put in a double summon. I don't know. I just threw something in there. Because I didn't want traps. I guess I could have put in a pulse because it's chainable. I could play it on the end phase or, or draw phase, you know, whatever. But I put in the double summon just to try to gain more advantage even though it's really not that great of a card because I don't have a ton of tributable cards now you start getting your recurring nightmares early with your combos and you're doing well now look at my hand here my hand is pretty bad it doesn't get much worse now that I drew uh, two of the infestations um, first steps towards infestation I'm dead I mean I really don't have any plays and then you'll see what he drops on me. And that's uh, really bad. So, I, <laughs> I could have had a formula sync on right here, which I do have in my extra deck. Because as bad as it sounds, that Scout Baylor play is useful. And Scout Baylor would also give me the light and dark for PLS. So, what do you guys think? Never going to happen? Well, if anything on the whole game was out there besides Fossil Dino or Vanity Fiend, cards like that, I'd be fine. Oh, look, Tour Guide. Fantastic. This hand usually would be great. I'd be wrecking shop, or at least Gorge would be out there saving my ass. Okay, so I just set the Tour Guide. I don't really want to bluff with First Step. Because I can't just activate it for no reason. You know, I can't just play it. Because I need to get my scout out if I can ever figure out a way to draw a caller or draw anything. But he's got two back row. He's pretty safe. So, as you can see, he just starts stepping down the life points. <clears throat> Slowly but surely. I guess I should do all these videos. And I just played Night Beam just to play Night Beam. There was no reason to play it. No reason to save it either. It was just like, whatever. But I did play the Veiler because I was hoping he would attack with the uh, both monsters and I could drop Gores, but he was too smart for that. And I thought, well, if I draw Dark Hole, there's any way to get rid of it. I'll, uh, I'll have BLS set up to go. He drops me down to 16, and unless I draw a Miracle here, it's over. And I didn't. So I give him the GG, which it's a habit. Yes, I know that wasn't a good game, but he didn't do anything. He wasn't a douchebag. It wasn't. It was just I drew a bad hand. So I might change my first step towards infestations to some econs. They would have helped me out quite a bit here, actually a lot. I could have sacked out the Veiler, stole his Fossil Dyna, sacked out the Fossil Dyna, drew something else, dropped the BLS. I could have did some plays. But I don't think that's ever going to come up again. So I put in the compulses for the Fossil Dyna. I take out a Night Beam. He doesn't play a ton of back row. Probably should have taken out the other Night Beam. 
I don't know. We'll see. So third game, we got seven watchers now. He Dev Kid Dad's a lot bigger than I am. He has like no what nine thousand subs, seven thousand. I don't know, but I don't ever get this many watchers. Usually <laughs> one to two. So my hand is interesting. My duality is not what I wanted. Sentinel is really my only good play, as you can see here, because I just played duality. But I mean, look at that. Dark Arm, Valor, and Storm with a tour guy coming up. It's not a bad hand. It's actually very good. And my when I play tour guides, I don't play I don't play Sangin in the deck. So when I play tour, which I, I guess I could, but when I play tour guide, it uh, gets me sentinel and I can just leave it out there if I can protect it somehow to drop the moth or whatever. Okay. Gores again. So I do that, I make him hopefully waste the Valor. He doesn't have it or he doesn't play it. Because he's probably saving it for the uh, the big guys. And I never drew that stupid mantis at the bottom right there. Never drew him. So I've got... Uh, I don't see any reason. 2100 attack versus 25. The 3000 was tempting, but I knew Dark Hunt was coming up pretty soon. So I did drop the, uh, the golem. That's a golem. And this time I actually did the opposite of what I probably should have did. Most people would have dropped, uh, would have attacked with the biggest because of gores. Uh, the smallest and the biggest, but I did biggest and smallest because I feel like, hey, I really want to uh, punch him now while I can. I didn't believe he had gores. Or Trag. I don't know if he plays Trag. So I've got uh, Dark in the Grave. I've got a way to sack off Sentinel, and I can pump up Leviathan. There's, I can get rid of both those Sentinels next turn. So I've got the Heavy Storm. I'm pretty much set up. So I do that. I try to bait out the uh, Veiler or Torrential or whatever it is to let my Dark Arm play be good. So there's the Veiler. So I pay a thousand for nothing. Right here, I should have played Heavy Storm. That was a mistake. Um. You know, he's, I got three darks. I don't know, we're just goofing off. I'm like, whatever. And then I uh, I banish the tour guide. You don't ever banish your steel swarm because you need to have your recurring nightmare plays. Level of Lolly. So we had a good time. It was a good duel. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Um, check back later. I got more videos coming up. You know, I got sneak preview stuff coming up next weekend. I uh, may do some reviews of some cards. Now that I have my computer back and this software, I'm going to do start doing deck profiles as well, too. So thanks for watching, guys. Please click that like button, and later.